got on call from Midhaven. Thank you for calling in. Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Hey, very good, man. Thank you. How was? Thank you so much for staying up to do this, man. How How was your day today no, up until this morning? How, how's it been? It's been It's been pretty. It's been full of alcohol. My friends have been here and, and they're waiting with me. <laughs> uh, two of them, two of them passed out. And <laughs> the rum is the rum is flowing and the beer is over. Hell yeah, dude. I'm with you, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, this, it, it calls for one of these. <laughs> Uh, I've, been, I've been partaking in the Merlot quite a bit tonight. <laughs> oh shit! You're keeping it classy. Keep it classy. Hey, Carl, I'm, yeah, I'm, keep, I'm, right keep it, I'm keeping it real, man. I just brought up the back. Yeah. How, how, did, how did you guys come together? How did Midhaven come together as a band? How did you meet? Well, Midhaven, Midhaven, was, Midhaven uh, Abhishek is the bassist and he does the growls. Uh, Shreyas is the guitarist and I am the, the front man. I do, I do the lead vocals, I do clean vocals, the guitar. I make most of the music as well. So we met in college. We were actually studying uh, economics, uh, economics and commerce. And we met in college and all three of us dropped out of college for music at the same oh, time. Wow. And yeah, man. I mean, we had we had we were gonna get degrees in uh, commerce and econo- uh, economics, and we were gonna <laughs> work in a in a day job, etc. And I just I came up with the idea of just dropping out of college and doing music full time, and they they loved it, and we just made Midhaven. That's how it came to be. How did you come up with the name? The name is uh, derived from an astronomical word. Okay. Uh, the term uh, Midhaven. Is actually what the word is, but we we changed it to mid midhaven, and uh, it just sort of it sort of means that you're 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 comfortable in your own zone where you are in the universe, etc. <laughs> that's that's, that's cool. pretty cool, man. Big that. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm I'm sort of into astronomy, so I thought of making a a cool name with sound would so would go well with cool songs, and it just happened to be. Yeah, it's it's we, funny that you know you, you all made that decision to um, take. Your education uh, to put it to a halt and and start this band and look what it became now. I want to go ahead and announce. Let's go ahead and go into it. Your um, signing by Universal that is just quite yeah, amazing. We, How did that feel? Six months. Yeah, we're the only only Asian metal band to be signed by Universal Music. Uh, six months back, they approached us and said, you know, we want we want to sign you guys, and it was like a dream come true. I didn't really believe it because uh, Universal Music Group from the UK actually owns seventy five percent of the music that's all around the world. So from from your Metallica to your Cannibal Corps, they've got everything. Yeah. So uh, I was just flipping my shit. Yeah. I would have been doing black backflips, <laughs> dude, for sure. Well tell me now how did they find you guys? Did were they just looking and scouting for, you know, Asian metal bands and just found you guys? Uh, not really. I mean, the uh, managing director of Universal, uh, his name uh, of uh, the Asia Pacific Zone, he was in a band called Brahma. It's an it's an Indian metal band that uh, sort of died out in the in the nineties. And uh, he was he was looking for the metal band because he realized that uh, Universal UK said that we have no Asian metal bands. So he uh, sent out scouts all over the country, and they were they were looking at a few bands here and there. And we were seventeen at the time when they first saw us, but they came back to us when when I, when I turned nineteen, and then when I'm turning twenty, uh, I turned twenty, and then etc. But when they first saw us, we had just started the band, and I, I told them that you know, we were doing competitions, etc. Then they came, they saw another show of us uh, in a neighboring city called Pune. We went and we headlined this uh, huge festival, and they just saw it, and they said, wow, these guys are awesome. And they asked me my age, and at, at the time, I was 19 years old. So I said, uh, I'm 19. And they said, holy shit, you got, you got to come to the Universal office, and I landed up there. I came in, I don't know, a, a black T-shirt and cargo pants and boots, and everyone's looking at me like I'm... <laughs> <laughs> something else and uh they they gave us a contract and I we went over it and we loved it. That's amazing man. That is just quite cool. Uh, <laughs> well, like you kept it really metal here. too man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we we spoke during yeah. the week, man. I gotta say you're a really cool dude, man. And um one thing I had, had spoke to you about was um that I'm really into the Indian culture, Brian knows this, my, a lot of my friends know this. Um, I'm kind of a geek when it comes to uh, Indian cuisine and, and films. And um, uh, what I'm kind of segueing into was that I was lucky enough to um, witness the IIFA celebration in Tampa just this yeah. year. Um, yeah, it's the weirdest thing. It, it, go ahead. IFA, yes, yes, yeah, yes. I mean, 
I hear that reference a lot. They, yeah, the uh, they had to, uh, Indian Bollywood has become so big. It's it's huge in Asia. First of all, I mean India mm-hmm. is the, is like the second largest population populated country in Asia, and we dominate the uh, the music scene and uh, the culture and everything. Everyone loves uh, our culture, loves our food, loves our uh, our models in Bollywood, <laughs> our actresses. It's so it sort of it sort of blew up. And uh, if you saw Slumdog Millionaire, that really wasn't the Bollywood movie, but uh, people started seeing that. And that's not what that's not what Indian life is at all. It just sort of gave it to them that we do have actors, we do have talent. And then it, IFA Awards has been. In fact, my grandfather is one of, is, is an IFA Award winner. But <laughs> oh wow, uh, yeah, uh, he was a director in the 70s. And <laughs> the, um, the the idea of uh, Bollywood being uh, going abroad is, is, I mean, every movie actually releases in, in New York and London before it releases in India. So the I, I mean, it was jam packed in in uh, in Miami, in Tampa. Where was it? Yeah, in, I, it, it was, was in Florida. Tampa. Yeah, it, yeah, it's the weirdest thing I uh, got on how I ended up there. Uh, me and a good friend of mine, we were going to a concert which was called 98 Rock Fest in Tampa. Um, and yeah. after walking from the car two miles to the venue. I realized I didn't have my ticket. I left it in the car. And so me and this chick, we had to walk two miles back to the car. And on the way trekking back to the venue, we see all of these people at the uh, Hilton Hotel in Tampa just going crazy. And my friend, uh, Denise is her name, she's a huge Bollywood fan. And she she figured out what it was. And so we had to go. And I got to see you were mentioning – go ahead. Was it it on the overpass? And under no, 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 no. Okay, I saw, I saw something similar. I'm sorry, but oh, okay, it's no, okay. It was really uh, cool. But, but go ahead. But, 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 but during this thing, um, we we went to it, and you were mentioning um, um, like '70s films and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, Slumdog Millionaire, one of the coolest people that I got to see come out of those doors was Anil Kapoor live. I mean, I was just blown away. I couldn't believe it. Anil, Anil, Anil um, I mean, I've, I've met him. I've met him in, in real life. Uh, oh, wow. He's quite tiny I mean, when I first met him. Yes. And he's quite small. I mean, but, uh, he, he, he's really famous here. And, I mean, he was he's his daughter, Sonam Kapoor, and she's really... Huge as well. So yeah. I mean, we've got we've got actresses from everywhere, and uh, <coughs> we've got the we've got. I mean, the intensity of uh, I mean, how people live through Bollywood movies here, it, it, it's it's crazy. I mean, I know everyone of any age group just lives and breathes Bollywood. So many of them. Yeah. That. <laughs> I mean, for for you to see uh, Anil Kapoor is oh my God! I see Anil Kapoor. When someone hears he's Anil Kapoor, they don't they want to they don't want to wash their hand for like a month. <laughs> they touch him. <laughs> you know, that's the way I mean, I'm not, I don't mean, I don't mean I don't mean a name drop. Um, that that was one for sure. Um, but yeah, also Vivek Oberoi, uh, Sarab Shukla, Harithik Roshan. Um, oh, I did wow. not get to see you, you, the you, woman. Holy shit! You, you said the perfectly. name the right accent. <laughs> <laughs> pronounce all yeah. perfectly. You pronounce them very yeah. well. Oh, thank you. Um, now I wish I would have seen the woman, like I told you earlier this week, that I'm in love with, Ashwarya. Oh, Ashwari. Ashwari. oh well, my she God! She had a baby. Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> lucky Abhishek Bachchan. Yeah, yeah, I wish I was him. I mean, she's she was she's really beautiful. I mean, she she was Miss World. She was Miss yeah. India, Miss World, Miss Asia, everything, and. Uh, <laughs> She's actually from this really small uh, part in India. It's a village in south of India, and, and uh, apparently that that village has produced a thousand beautiful actresses in India. It's just that oh my God. same place. <laughs> it's really shocking. I have no idea how they're, they're born there, but uh, many of the actresses now dominate from that place. And uh, I mean, I've I've seen Ashwini Rai in person as well, and she's stunning in person. But oh my God. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't know about how she uh, is as a person. Right. Well, speaking about uh, her being with with Abhishek, um, now, growing up, were you um, a big fan of Amitabh Bachchan uh, movies? I, I was I was one generation late after Amitabh Bachchan. So I grew up on the Salman Khan, the uh, Shah Rukh Khan, uh, the smaller actors like Nana Patekar, etc. I, I, I skipped the Amitabh Bachchan generation because I was just, I was, I'm, a, I'm an 80s, 90s kid. So I grew yeah. up watching in the 90s. And Amitabh Bachchan was famous in the 80s. He was, by the time he was hit the 90s, he was he already had gray hair and gray beard. And he had Amitabh, and right. his son Abhishek Bachchan was already big. So, 
But my right, well, I know Bollywood boss. I can, <laughs> I can go on with you all day with Indian culture. I'm gonna go. I'm, I know I'm probably boring Brian and Tom right now. Me and you talking about this. They're, nah, they're like, what, what the hell? I don't know what these guys are talking about. I come from a neighborhood in New York that's ninety percent Indian. So uh, it's it's okay. I mean, you, 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 know, you, you can't confuse. That, that, you can't, you that, must you mustn't confuse uh, Indians with Pakistanis. We're very different from them. No, 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 no. I know this. I know this too. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we're very, very different from them. I mean, they are the ones with umbrellas. We're the ones who want gas stations. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. These, these, these are these are doctors, lawyers. You know, you know, yeah, very, very uh, upstanding citizens and very good people. Yeah, uh, just, uh, yeah. It, 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 but you guys, um, you know, you guys I don't, must, I don't know much about the culture because they were, you know. <laughs> Uh, I was a metalhead, you know, so I only wanted to know about yeah. metal, <laughs> and they weren't into it. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I can tell you, Indian Indian metal is insane at the moment. It's it's right. there's a huge boom in the market, and there are metalheads from all you know all parts of the country, and the Indian metal bands. I think uh, Anthony's heard some of them, but there are many. In, I mean, many of my mentors are actually Indian musicians, and not. Uh, I I mean everyone's mentors like Dimebag or something, but I've grown up on so much so much Indian metal that that I can't even I can't even stop naming them. Like Demonic Resurrection and Bhanak Moth, etc. They're really, really, really talented bands. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I've never heard of you guys, but now that I that I heard the name, I'm, I'm going to go after this show. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to listen to you like all night long. So, <laughs> well, you're, uh, you're probably not going to have to do that. <laughs> we can, uh, I mean, both we're going to play I mean, I got, a couple. I got the, strangest, I got the strangest call from Alice Cooper's pro- uh, producer, Bo Hill. Uh, right. He called me up and he's like, I discovered you on a radio station uh, in uh, Texas on KEGL. And I said, okay. And he said, uh, I want to produce you. So I said, what? And uh, wow. I've still been, I've been, I've been, I've been bare chest since the day he called me. Hold out, bro. Hold out. <laughs> Hold on, I was super <laughs> old school, man. <laughs> man, you guys, you guys are on me. Wait, 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 wait till Terry Day to Rick Rubin calls you. I mean, that's kind of old school too. But no, no. <laughs> I mean, it's not. Oh, okay, I mean, it's not like he's. I'm sorry. We got. We we have we have a lot of songs. I want to go ahead and go into the first one. Uh, Follow the Olympus is the first one I'll play on the show. Could you tell us the vision behind the song or the meaning behind uh, the music you were about to listen to? Sure. Um, Fall of Olympus was written in the studio. We had finished the album and we wrote Fall of Olympus as a bonus track, but we actually included it in the and it's actually the main storyline. It's about Shiva, the Indian deity who is who has dreadlocks and smokes a lot of hash. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's metal, yeah, dude. The, he lives in he lives alone in solitude in the mountains in in the snow mountains and the 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 song is about him going to Greece and killing Apollo the sun god. Oh <laughs> and, wow! Uh, because he was <laughs> yeah because apparently I had a dream. Well, I had a Viking up down. Form of a dream. Yeah, my dream was basically that Apollo was very corrupt. So I woke up in the morning and wrote the lyrics down. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It really was. Yeah. All right, listeners. Well, here yeah, we go. Like, this is Min Haven. Uh, cut on. Stick with us. The first song we're going to play by this band. Here we go. Fall of Olympus. <laughs>
Okay, we are back. Listeners, that is Midhaven from Mumbai, India, with Fall of Olympus. We have with us lead singer of this band, Karanka. Wow, dude, amazing song. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, okay, I want to go ahead and jump back in. I, I, I was thinking of a lot. Of, oh yeah, go ahead, Brian. Oh no, I was going to say I, I went as soon as we were talking about you know Midhaven. Um, obviously, go to YouTube these days to find out a lot of shit. You know, listen to the music, whatever. Um, and I watched the uh, in the studio vlog that you guys did, and uh, that's pretty cool, man. That you guys did that. A lot of bands forget to show you know behind the scenes type. It kind of gets your um, your audience to feel a little bit closer. To, uh, to you guys yeah, as I mean, people we, and a lot music. Of stuff, a lot of our stuff on YouTube has been taken off uh, by Universal itself, mainly because they want to they close down the Midhaven channel on YouTube, and in a month or two, they're uploading uh, the Midhaven Vivo account, which would have wow. everything. And that would, yeah, so we tied up with Vivo last month, and uh, I can't wait oh, for that, because cool. we're shooting a music video. As, I mean, today is going to be a music video shoot as well, <laughs> and I don't think I'll wake up for it, but... Uh, I mean, it's going to be released on Vivo, and it's going to be released through VH1 and uh, Pepsi, MTV Indies, etc. And it's, it's. I mean, Vivo is going to be where you'll get all the Midhaven videos, live, studio, everything. So I, I'm looking awesome. forward to that. <laughs> well, well, that's really cool, yeah. Karan. I, I, got a, I got some questions for you um, still, and sure. I want to go ahead and go into the next one, which is um, tell me about the writing process and the recording process for Spellbound, how did that go from from beginning to now? How was that process? Um, we we were not originally writing uh, metal like this. I mean, we were not writing. I have no idea what what genre to actually put it into. It's sort of sludgy, sort of progressive. It, it has uh, death growls to shouts to cleans. I mean, it's a mixture of everything, and we were not we were really confused on what to do. So. <laughs> our old friend of ours from a, from a brilliant band called Reverse Polarity, who have actually signed with Universal recently. Um, wow. They, the, the, the basis of the band is an old friend of ours, and he's about 30. He's about to get married soon. And uh, um, he, we, we approached him and said, you know, you recorded our EP. Why don't you get us into your proper studio with proper equipment and live amps and <laughs> not, not digitally recorded cheap stuff and then do everything. So he worked out a deal for us and he said, I'll produce you. And, and uh, we actually sat down six months of writing and we thought, uh, Universal wants to pick you up. I mean, they approached us. So I said, they told us that if you don't have a good record, we're not picking you up. So we had to make the best record for them. And uh, six months of writing every day in the studio, and uh, finally we started recording. Um, there are there are many elements in the which I mean bands like Mastodon have influenced us a lot, uh, from Mastodon to Gujira, because uh, I've seen Mastodon live in New York uh, in 2012, and since I watched them in New York with Opeth, I think I my balls dropped. <laughs> I need oh, wow. something like that. <laughs> yeah, so we we just came back 2013. Uh, the beginning of 2013 was uh, after we did our tour, our India tour. We thought we thought we'd chill out and just write songs. We wrote about 14 to 15 tracks, and we chose nine as the best. And uh, well, it was hard work and paid off. That's very cool. Um, I want to ask you. You've been uh, you know on stage a while. You, you've gone through the loops. You're, you're signed to Universal. You're very well renowned now. What's so far been your most memorable experience on stage? What's that one thing that, that you remember so far in we your just, career? I'd love to leave that. I, we just finished uh, a, 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 a small Northeast tour, like a four city tour, because we finished the album. We, we didn't want to release it. The main tour starting in March because we released the album a bit too late. So the festivals were like, holy fuck, you released it too late. So we said next year around we're going to go for a full world thing. But we did a Northeast tour, which is around Nepal, and it was just spectacular. I mean, we've played shows all over the country. We've done uh, everything. But <laughs> this one show particularly, it's, it's, it's a small city called Guwahati in Assam, and there are many metal bands there. We went, we flew all the way there, and we, we played this brilliant show where there was just a sea of people. I mean, I could just see a sea of people, and I've, I've never experienced that in such a in great depth. And I'm standing on stage, and I said, do you guys want a headbang? And literally everyone flipped their shit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I think that was that was my experience of saying, "Do you want a headbang?" And people just screaming back at me like, "Yeah, we really do." And that was it. I mean, that's when I felt the zenith wow. of where Midhaven could go. That is and, amazing. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, it was just it was just one entire mosh party. I would say that's cool. Shit, All right, we'll cut on Florida next time. <laughs> Sorry. 
Uh, got a, speaking of that, do, do you have any uh, um, U.S. Um, even ideas thrown out there by Universal that you might come to the U.S.? I mean, we've spoken to Bo Hill uh, about a small tour, as he has a little record label and a booking agency. But it's too expensive for us to come just for a one-off gig or, or even like a week week of touring because it's it's very expensive uh, for yeah. us, especially because Universal will will give you the funds to go there, but they need something back, you know. So oh, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> unless we get us, we're actually going. We're looking at France for March, and that looks like it looks reasonable because I have few friends in France who can help us out here and there. But uh, America, I'm not too sure about that. No, no, well, I tell you what, I can uh, I really hope one day that y'all can get over here because we'll sir, we'll certainly be there. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. All right, got on. I want to go ahead and jump back in. Uh, we got two more songs by you guys. The next one I want to play. Um, I'd like you if you'd give the listeners. Uh, we have right currently about ten thousand tuning in right now um, that might not be aware of the meaning behind uh, Third Eye, but also if it's uh, the same vision behind the song that we're about to listen to. What's the vision behind this song? So the Third Eye was uh, its basically a Shiva chant. Shiva is, as I said, the uh, protagonist of the album. He's not supposed to be God. He's supposed to be human. Uh, and he, <clears throat> the chant Shiva is, uh, there's a word that goes with it, is Om. Om is the in Hinduism is the uh, universal rep- uh, Hinduism isn't really a religion so for us it's just a way of life and Om means um, how do I say it uh, the sound of the universe and when you're singing Om Shiva is together is the sound of the universe as well as destruction so we made that sort of a chant like a Buddhist chant but then we added some metal and then we added a classic rock solo to it just a, <laughs> a mixture of what we thought we could do best and. Uh, it's, it's it's in Sanskrit, the ancient language of the Indians, which is like probably 30,000 years old. All right. Well, here we go, listeners. Uh, by the way, 347-989-8808 is the call-in line. Uh, listeners, feel free to call in. People cutting off from Midhaven. And we're about to listen now to Third Eye by the stand. Here we go.
All right, listeners, we are back to the Metal International Show, Episode 5, with the God on Golf from Midhaven. Wow, dude, amazing song. I love it. It's so chill in metal. It That works, man. That really works. Love that song. Thank you, man. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> God on. I want to go ahead and ask you a few more things before we go into the last song. Um, one thing uh, that I'm very curious about, we just went uh, past Halloween, and I'm curious, is it celebrated in India as much as it is a uh, big thing here in America? <laughs> I mean, for the past, uh, Halloween for the past 10 years has been pretty big here. Uh, my sister, uh, my younger sister, she loves Halloween. And uh, recently, we just went to a club, in fact, on Halloween. I dressed up as a biker because I guess it just fits what I look like. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's huge. People come in all sorts of costumes. and I mean, the trick-or-treat doesn't happen as much as it does in New York or in, anywhere in the States or in Canada or, you know, in, or in even England. But here, it's, it's, it's more of a party scene. You know, people want to go get drunk and just dress up. Wow. That's cool. Um, there's a question that I really <laughs> like to ask the bands when they call in. Do you guys have any uh, things that you do before you go on stage? Like, right before you go on a lot of bands, they'll pray together. Uh, some will just isolate themselves, listen to their iPod. Do you have any kind of like rituals that you do as a band right before you go on? Well, we all do our separate things. Uh, Abhishek and Shreyas, uh, they, they actually, they, they loosen up by, by just joking around and, you know, a few, <coughs> what do you call limericks here and there. But the drummer, he's, he listens to some of, some Meshuga before playing live. He likes nice. to listen to a lot of Meshuga's pubs. And I, Personally, I, I have the weirdest habit. I listen to classical music. I listen to uh, Jeremy Soule. He's a composer for Skyrim, and I love contemporary classical, so I listen to that at least an hour before the show because I need to cool oh, down before I heat up on show, uh, on stage. <laughs> All right, that's, that's awesome. Um, you were nominated for your band uh, for the V8 One Sound Nation Awards as the best metal act. Yeah. That, that must feel yeah. amazing, man. Yeah, I mean, I had to buy a suit and go to the <laughs> the award <laughs> show and the red carpet. And I mean, I've never done that in my entire life. Uh, I've not, I've not owned anything else except for black t-shirts. And I went, we all went together and bought suits, <laughs> and, uh, landed up at the <laughs> at the awards uh, ceremony, and it was just an experience that I, I mean, coming on TV and my mom and dad watching it at home, and it was something something completely different that people would not expect. So for a metal band, well, especially. That's cool. Um, me and Brian were both big fans of horror movies, uh, gore and uh, thriller type, you know, scary stuff. Do you have in India? I'm, I'm, this is one thing I'm not so familiar with. Does India have a, uh, a horror type uh, scene at all through the films? Do you have any favorite scary Indian movies that you could uh, suggest for me? Uh, any suggestions? I would have to say, I'll have to, just give me one second, I'll ask my friend. Oh, my name is Sunny Leon, what's the Uh, horror movie. Ha, so there's this, there is this one, uh, you know the porn star, Sunny Leon? Okay. She, she's actually Indian, Sunny Leon, she's a porn star and she's Indian, and, uh, Brazers, she signed to Brazers, which is like, well, the best porn site in the world, so she, um, <laughs> she signed a contract with an Indian, uh, filmmaker, and they made this horror movie called Ragini MMS, which is basically about, I don't know, this, this, it's epic. Uh, it's, it's more of cheap thrills than gore, but India's first shot at horror films, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> while we're on uh, Indian cinema, do you have any favorite uh, movies that you've seen lately that you can recommend to, to me, to the listeners, that you'd like to throw out there for? Well, lately, lately they've been, they've been... I mean, there's not been too many good movies lately, but all-time favorites. Uh, I mean, the classics from the 70s and 80s. But recently, there was a, uh, there was a there was a terror attack in Mumbai uh, in 2008 where uh, Pakistan. I want to talk uh, about that. Now, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, we're gonna talk. I want that, I wanted to bring that up with you as well, uh, particularly with my job. I actually uh, dealt with that firsthand. Uh, but go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about that. But uh, there's a movie based on it. Uh, it's very good. It's a very nice. It's a very. Uh, it's a. It's a thriller, and it's it. It basically sort of like a documented movie because they they use the same lines that, that was recorded while they tortured the, uh, the terrorist. And uh, yeah. it's called Twenty Six Eleven: The Mumbai Attacks, uh, and it's, it's it's a very very good movie. I would definitely recommend for you to watch it. Okay, well I will certainly do that. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'll go ahead and say what I was talking about. Um, back in 2008, I dealt firsthand with the uh, Taj Mahal takeover. Um, I work yeah. for what's called Confleur Affairs when I'm not on the radio, uh, which is a, uh, an agency within the U.S. Department of State. And what we do is we help U.S. citizens get back home when they're in crisis situations. So I, I literally dealt firsthand over the phone hearing gunshots in the background, really, really scary stuff. Uh, knowing that you're from that area, it, it, that must have been such a traumatic thing. I actually, I actually to live I, to be. I mean, where I where I stay, I live. I can see the sea, and uh, where I'm standing right now is basically I can see the two hotels that were that were under attack. I can see oh, both wow. of them, and I remember in 2008 seeing them both on fire. And my my, oh my parents, God. actually, my mother and father, they were at the Oberoi, the, the Trident Hotel. Uh, they were having dinner and. Uh, they escaped, luckily, in time, but many uh, poor souls didn't. And uh, I mean, yeah. it's it's scary, but our army, uh, the Indian army, had to come in and and uh, take care of things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, okay, here we go. Uh, I, I know what a sad note to go into the last song, um, but I do want to go ahead and go into the last song set on. But before that, I want to just from the bottom of my heart, thank you. You have become an instant friend over the week. I mean, you're an awesome, really cool, down-to-earth dude, man. I really appreciate that. As well for coming on the thank show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, an awesome interview. Was, well, thank you very much. Um, you took uh, 45 minutes of your time to do this, and I just want to thank you again. I really appreciate this. No problem. Now you can go to the show. Now you can get some fucking sleep, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I would really. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to pass out the minute the song's over. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Karan, uh, we are now about to play Spellbound. Uh, before we go into it, would you please tell me as well as the listeners the vision behind this song? <laughs> uh, Spellbound is basically the album name as well as the title track of the song. And and the um, we wrote this song in the studios as well. Uh, it was a last minute thing where I had just jotted down some lyrics and I thought it would be nice to have a sludgy song uh, to go with the album. This song is, is written about humanity and how humanity has forgotten its roots about peace and love. And it's about more of money making and and having and nobody's doing anything for for charity. Nobody's doing anything for for humans, animals, nothing. So it's sort of being uh, like chained to uh, societies today and as corrupt societies today. So it's sort of and towards the ending, you'll hear the song go into like breakdowns and then a, a clean up art and just showing like cleansing of the earth. All right. Got on. I've announced enough. If you would please announce this song for the listeners. Uh, but however, before you do that, I just want to once again say thank you. Uh, it's been an honor, and I'll be talking to you very soon. I hope you get some great sleep. Yes. And once again, please <laughs> inter- introduce the song for our listeners. This next one's called Spellbound by Midhaven.
Midhaven spelled down. <laughs>